High blood cholesterol, also known as dyslipidemia, is a condition characterized by abnormally elevated cholesterol levels in blood, especially the LDL cholesterol fraction and total cholesterol. It is one of the major modifiable risk factors for heart disease, stroke, and peripheral vascular disease. The causes of high cholesterol can be genetic or acquired. Acquired causes are much more common and may include unhealthy dietary habits such as high fat, high calorie diet, high sugar intake, smoking, and sedentary lifestyle, etc. In most patients, high blood cholesterol goes unrecognized for many years because it is largely asymptomatic. However, some patients exhibit certain signs of high blood cholesterol. Let's talk about four of them in detail. Number one, xanthelasma. Xanthelasmas are fatty deposits around the eyes occurring as a consequence of high blood cholesterol levels. They are one of the commonest signs of high cholesterol. Number two, arcus cornea. These are lipid deposits that appear as rings on the outer region of the cornea. They usually occur in both eyes and are related to high cholesterol levels in blood. Number three, recurrent chest pain. Recurrent chest pain could be due to many reasons. One of them is high blood cholesterol and associated coronary artery disease. When blood cholesterol is high, excess cholesterol tends to deposit in the inner layer of coronary arteries, causing reduced blood supply to the heart muscle. This leads to a constricting type of chest pain, which could be an angina or a heart attack. This type of chest pain typically occurs with exertion or early in the morning at rest. It may radiate up the neck and jaw and down the left arm and may be associated with profuse sweating and palpitations. Number 4. Intermittent claudication. This symptom occurs when the lipid plaques develop in the arteries supplying the lower limbs. It is a reproducible, constricting type pain occurs in certain muscle groups of lower limbs when the patient walks for a fixed distance. The pain typically subsides when the patient stops and recurs when the patient walks for the same distance again. It is important to keep in mind that these symptoms can be affected by various other factors and some patients never get them. Therefore, it is best to consult your healthcare provider regarding these signs and for further evaluations.